guys, Sparks here. Um, I just thought I'd do a quick video. This is actually a response to uh, Ironhead41. And he had some questions on thermal siphoning. And what I'm going to do is uh, hopefully I can answer them. And at the same time show you all how uh, thermal siphoning works. So let's go. And what I want to do is uh, using the solar water here as an example is uh, do a quick walk through and show you all how uh, thermal siphoning works. And as I'm going through this video, I'd like you guys to remember just two things throughout the whole video. Uh, hot water flows up, cold water flows down. That's how, uh, that's two of the basic principles of uh, thermal siphoning and uh, how it works. Now the one real main purpose of uh, thermal siphoning is uh, hot water storage for long term, like say later on in the night or the next morning. Because uh, most uh, solar collectors, while well, they, they do a great job at uh, collecting the heat and turning it into hot water, but what they don't do so well is when the, uh, when the sun goes down, they will, um, since the heat's not there anymore, they will uh, re-radiate the heat back into the atmosphere so all that uh, water, that, hot water that's generated uh, will be lost so that's why it's best to uh, transfer as much hot water as you can to the uh, uh, insulated tank whether it's on the inside or the outside. The uh, sun is starting to come around now. The temperature inside the tank is starting to climb and it's only about 11 o'clock in the morning and this is the uh, hot water out so when the uh, water inside the tank gets hot it starts flowing and it's already starting to uh, get warm so that means the thermal siphoning process has started and as I follow the uh, hot water pipe on around this is the uh, path that the hot water takes on into the uh, hot water tank on the inside. Now I put this, I could have put a, I could have uh, brought it over and 90 it up, but I added this 45 right here, which um, I have found out helps the uh, thermal siphoning process quite a lot because it smooths, makes a smoother path, I think. To, uh, going up which uh, makes the um, water transfer sooner now on the inside there's the same hot water pipe that was going through the wall there's the path that the hot water is taken to uh, complete its uh, journey to the uh, tank on the inside now for the cold water side because the cold water hooks up here but um, here's a, the uh, path that the cold water takes leaving out of the house now on the outside of the house this is the path that the cold water takes during the uh, thermal siphoning process and travels back in the tank Now what I want to do is, uh, to the best that I can, show you the uh, solar water heater and its uh, relation to the uh, insulated tank on the inside. Because one crucial element in uh, thermal siphoning is that your, uh, your insulated tank must be higher than your, um, uh, either your solar water heater that collects the heat or solar collector, you know, either one, but um, your insulated tank must be higher in order for it to work. So let me uh, go on the inside and show you the difference. There's the height of the uh, hot water pipe coming out of the solar water heater. There's the height of the water pipe going into the house. 
so therefore the hot water is going up there's the uh, height of the uh, hot water pipe going into the tank from the uh, solar water heater so therefore I am able to show you that uh, the hot water is indeed going up here's the uh, height on the uh, inside tank of the cold water outlet to show that the uh, the cold water does start at a higher point and does go into the um, solar water heater at a lower height now this is just actually one version of the uh, solar water heater there's there's many there's hundreds I think out there on the uh, internet but uh, they all follow one concept that, you know as I've been kind of trying to mention all through the video is that you've got to keep the solar collector lower than your um, your insulated tank because that way the hot water can push up and the cold water can push down without the need of any additional pumps as my system doesn't have has no additional pumps at all but um, now if you want to put it on the roof I, I wouldn't suggest putting a tank on a roof unless your roof is made to withstand you know four five six hundred pounds mine's not but if I was going to do put this on the roof, I would build a, um, a solar collector out of some pipes, you know, and paint them flat black, just like the tank. But you can put them on the roof, and then uh, put a, I guess, a, a smaller insulated tank, but it's got to be higher. It's got to be above the collector, so all the hot water flows up and the cold water flows down. All right, guys. With all that being said, uh, I'm going to close the video out because uh, it's getting hot now. But uh, I hope it all made sense. Um, I hope it answered your questions, uh, Ironhead. And uh, I'll see you on the flip side. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.